Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So uh, maybe first, as a quick introduction, um, a bit, a bit, uh, a bit story about me. Um, I'm actually from Belgium. Um, that's why I have this bloody French accent when I speak English. And I actually moved to the United States um, um, eight years ago, eight years ago to, uh, to San Francisco to start this company, Storyfy. So I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I'm also a developer. I love coding. And for those of you uh, who don't know what Storyfy was, what, uh, it was a platform to tell stories using what people post on social networks. And it was used by a lot of com uh, media organizations, but also by uh, political parties, by Barack Obama for his campaign, uh, by Al Jazeera to, to convey the stories happening in, uh, during the Arab Spring. And so that's what I did for a couple of years, then sold the company, and, uh, and then I was back in Belgium, and I wanted to pay it forward and help the local community of entrepreneurs. Um, to, to basically, we started uh, this movement called the Startup Manifesto. And the goal was to come up with recommendations to the government, but also to the media, to the, um, the education system, about what can be done in this country to make it suck less for entrepreneurs who also want to, to do something. And during that process, like it was kind of a classic um, internet-led movement, bottom-up, right? Just a bunch of friends getting together, doing something, putting up a website, using hashtags. Uh, we call it the waffle tag because it's Belgian, and and so like and then at some point we just wanted to print stickers to promote the movement, and then we we were wondering like okay who is going to pay for this, uh, you know we are just like a group of friends and paying for stickers was just a bit expensive, and so we thought like well there are tens of thousands of people who support the movement it was really popular in the Belgian media, and so we thought like let's just create a website and and uh, ask people for donations. And then with the money, we'll be able to pay for stickers and other things. And so we thought it would be easy, but actually it turns out it's not that simple. Because for being able to collect money as a community, you first need to create a bank account. And to create a bank account for a community, you first need to create a legal entity, a 20th century legal entity. And so as millennials, the last thing we wanted to do was doing paperwork and creating a non-profit organization that in France, by the way, they call that the Association de Loi de 1901 of Law of 1901, which as its name you know, shows, it's kind of outdated. And so we thought like, okay, like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then we are basically stuck. And it was a very frustrating experience. There were literally tens of thousands of people wanted to contribute to the movement, were willing to give us money, and we had to leave the money on the table. And so out of that experience, I realized that, huh, that's interesting. The internet so far has been really good at helping our generation to do things together, whether it's those type of movements uh, or meetup groups, uh, creating hackathons, uh, open source projects, new political parties, and so on. But, but once there is money involved, we still need to go back to the 20th century create those all legal entities, define a president. I mean, who is the president of a movement? That doesn't make any sense. Having a treasurer, only one person has access to the bank account, that doesn't make any sense neither. We wanted to be very transparent and make sure that the entire community could see that we wanted to raise money for the good of the community. And so that's kind of basically how I got the idea that, okay, this is a, an important problem to me to solve. Um, and that's how basically started Open Collective. Um, the, I want to show you like, what it looks like. Basically, the goal of Open Collective is to create a new generation of association for our generation uh, that you can create as easily as creating a Facebook group and that will enable you to start collecting money. And the whole idea is that um, there is really like, no reason if you want to start your own organization, your own nonprofit, to reinvent the wheel every single time. I don't know if you remember, but back in the 90s, if you wanted to have your own website, you needed to have your own server. You basically need to know how to code. And then we realized that, huh, um, it doesn't make any sense. Actually, if I know how to manage a server, I can actually host your website and also your website so that you don't have to worry about maintaining the server and you can publish online. 
And so that's basically the idea of open collective, is to virtualize existing legal entities so that we don't need to create a new one every single time. And so here, for example, we have Women Who Code, which is a, an organization, a nonprofit in the United States. They started in San Francisco, uh, and now they have 72 chapters all around the world. Uh, Seattle, uh, Seattle uh, New York, Tokyo even. And each of those chapters, it's basically a group of women who want to teach other women how to code. And um, they're passionate about that. The last thing they want to do is create a legal entity doing the accounting and all of that. And so here what we do is that every, of those, every single of those chapters, they have their own collective uh, on opencollective.com, and each of them can collect money. Uh, people can become a backer, um, and they each have their budget. And the key thing here is that everything is transparent. So all the money coming in and all the money going out is fully transparent. And so this is great because if you want to support that group and you know they are operating in full transparency, you're going to be much more likely to give money. Also, for the main organization, if everything is transparent, it's easier for them to trust and to enable them to kind of rent their legal entity so that they can operate um, without having to worry about the accounting and all of that. And so here you can see there is a button to actually submit an expense. Um, and everyone basically can file an expense. It can take a picture with their phone or upload a PDF. Um, and as soon as it is approved by the community, people get reimbursed. So that's the general idea. Um, and it turns out that actually it works really well for open source communities. Because open source communities, for those of you who are familiar, are basically people all around the world who contribute to the same project. And because they are all around the world, well, they don't have a legal entity, right? Because they don't know in which country they should create the entity. And because they don't always see each other, they also like, don't want to create an opaque 20th century legal entity. And so what they do is they create an open collective. And so here, for example, we have Webpack, which is a, a popular project. They have 500 contributors all around the world. And they already raised $250,000. Uh, um, and so what's interesting is that so people can become a backer. Companies can become sponsors. Um, what's interesting is that now they, they can hire someone to work on the open source project. Before. The only, you know, those, most of those open source projects were made by people like at night or during the weekend. Uh, and so there were a lot of burnout. And um, because basically there, there were no money for those open source communities. And there was no money, not because people didn't want to give them money, but because technically there was no place to receive the money. Like for Belgium Startup Manifesto, all of those open source communities didn't have a legal entity. And so now, by creating this new virtual layer on top of those legal entities, we can offer each of those communities a virtual entity, and they can start receiving money. Um, and so what's interesting now is that we see, like, this is another community, Babel. Uh, we see more and more companies. We have Google, Facebook just started uh, also sponsoring those different communities. And you can see each company, each backer, has their own profile on Open Collective. And you can see all the different projects that they are contributing to and how much money they give. And so what's really interesting is that this is really opening kind of a new way to, to create things together, to sustain them. And also, thanks to the transparency, um, we, we can really learn from each other. Right? Like now, like if you start your own open source project for those companies, it's easy to also sponsor a new open source project. I can also show you, like we uh, here, for those of you familiar with GitHub, uh, we also have uh, an integration here where you can see directly the number of backers and sponsors on the page, and they automatically show up on the page uh, on GitHub. And so that's really for open source. But really, beyond open source, like you know, we've seen with Women Who Code and other things, um, this can really create, spur a new generation of organization. And you know, we, we are also very interested in, in the future of cities. We look at cities like the internet. You know, a city is a public infrastructure on top of which citizens are invited to contribute. And then the result, like the internet, is nothing more than the sum of all of our contributions. 
But today, you know, and I'm, I'm based in New York City, but I'm also like, I'm actually part-time also in Brussels, and, and with friends, like, we're thinking like, ah, gosh, like, we have this love and hate relationship with this city, because love, there are so many international people, a lot of diversity and hate, because things don't move, uh, there's traffic jam all the time, like, we, you know, there's a lot of immobilism, and so we wanted to do, like, okay, what, what can we do? And, and really what we realized is that um, like on the internet, what we need to do is reduce the friction for citizens to be able to contribute. Uh, or can we make it simpler for people to create new schools, to create uh, new restaurants, to create whatever? Um, and that's really important. And what we realize that today, in Brussels, but that's true in many different cities, creating your own organization to do something in your city is like creating your own website in 1990. It requires, you need to know about accounting, you need to know about creating and managing, maintaining a legal entity. That makes no sense, right? What you're passionate about, like those women teaching other women how to code, is, is doing just that. And so, especially in Brussels, actually, I don't know if you know, there are 33% of people who are allophone, so they don't speak French or Dutch, and yet, if they want to collect money and open a bank account and create a legal entity, they need to do it, they need to do it in French or Dutch. Right, so the, the friction that exists is just really high. And so that's why we created uh, Brussels Together. And the goal is to enable people to create their own organization in Brussels without having their own virtual association, their own open collective. And so, um, for example, here we have Veganizer. Um, they are basically trying to bring more vegan options um, in, uh, in Brussels. And, and normally, usually, they would have to create their own entity, and here they could just create that entity virtually on Open Collective and start, being op start operating, receiving money, using that money, um, and getting support from the community. Um, and actually, I would love to, to actually show you uh, with the video to get people to... Uh, I don't know if you can put the sound on the, on the laptop. Ah oui, ça c'est une bonne question, ça. J'ai pas l'occasion. Why don't I do it? Catherine Tate. Parce que j'ai pas le temps. I don't have the money. Do you have the money for me? <laughs> bah parce qu'on est que des citoyens par rapport à tous les politiciens. On n'a pas, pas, pas le pouvoir. On n'a pas le pouvoir. Un projet, ça demande une équipe, ça demande des fonds. Il n'y a peut-être pas toujours ça à Bruxelles, quoi, tu vois. Parce que j'ai pas la possibilité de le faire, parce que j'y en ai pensé. Why don't I do it? Yeah, I'm kind of busy with work. Pourquoi moi je ne le fais pas? Probablement à cause du budget. Uh, I need money. But I don't have the money. I'm not the burgmaster of Bruxelles, quand même. Money and then uh, a good team. volunteers. I don't have anyone who can help me. And no excuses, Fieu. So this is a video that we made to really tell citizens that, that together we have everything we need. We don't need to rely on those old institutions to fix the problem for us. 20th century institutions are not going to be able to solve our 21st century problems, right? But we citizens, we can get, you know, get to work and do those things. And that's really the message that we want to give. Um, and so, so we do Open Collective. Open Collective is uh, also itself uh, uh, open source. So we really also invite like, people to, to contribute to the project. Uh, we try to be also as transparent as possible. So we've been, uh, if you go on uh, uh, opencollective.com, you will see uh, all of those. Um, let me show you. Um, so this is the GitHub page of Open Collective, where you can also people can contribute. Uh, we have an official blog where we also like, um, share all those different stories about the interesting collective that are happening. Uh, we also share our investor update and all of that, um, and um, and so yeah. So really, what we what really we wish to see in the world is, you know, like not so long ago, people were building software on top of Windows, and it was binary files on CD-ROMs, and we couldn't learn from each other. And then we started building software in the browser, where everybody could view source and learn, and that's how I learned how to program. And so what if we could actually get all of those new citizen initiatives to instead of building their association on top of the old operating system of the nation state, 
that require them to have like non-transparent association? What if we could get them to build those association on top of an open source and where everybody can see all the money they get, the money they spend, um, because that way we can start learning from each other, right? And that's really the future that we want to see in the world. Um, and so, so yeah, so please, you know, join the movement. Like, uh, we'd love to, uh, to get more collectives on the platform. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Questions? Um, thanks, uh, Xavier. Um, in Open Collective, uh, there are people from Brussels, but people also from the US, from New York, and uh, also from Argentina. There is uh, Pia Mancini, who, yeah. who is ve very well known for uh, her work on democracy OS in Argentina. Can you tell a little more about this collaboration and about uh, future work around uh, governance and democracy? Sure, so, uh, so actually we are three founders. Um, so Pia Mancini from Buenos Aires, who moved to New York. Um, Asim Sul, who is from India, worked at Google for seven years. And then a Belgian guy, me. Uh, that sounds like the beginning of a joke, but it's not a joke, it's, you know. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, no, it's been great, like, uh, you know, and I've known Asim for a long time, Pia as well. Um, we're both part of the World Economic Forum. Uh, so Pia also has been, like, uh, she's also, like, you know, uh, on Democracy Earth. And uh, we are passionate about this new generation of institutions, right? Um, especially, like, when you think about it, a political party is also an association of people with a shared purpose. And I think it's clear at this point that we need a new generation. Um, political parties, we've seen that with Trump, we've seen that in France as well, like all political parties uh, are basically dead at this point. Um, and, and we need a new generation urgently. And, um, and so yeah, so for example, like DiEM25, Yanis Varoufakis is starting this movement across Europe, for example. Uh, they're gonna be using Open Collective, uh, which we are really excited about that. Um, and so, yeah, our goal is to make it easier to create new, you know, association, new political party, new nonprofit. Um, there's been also this story, I don't know if you saw in the United States, about uh, doing the Haiti, um, um, like, uh, a few years ago. Like, the, the Red Cross had raised, like, $500 million, and NPR and ProPublica did the investigative journalism where they realized that actually um, they have no idea where that money went. And so, like all of those big 20th century uh, nonprofit organizations, they are so opaque, right? There's big institutions with so much layers of middle management that they, a lot of money is wasted. Like, we really need a new generation of um, nonprofit organizations that, by design, are going to be transparent. Yep. Uh, sorry. Hi. Yeah. Oh, Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> After you. Yeah. Two related questions. One is what is the business model of Open Collective? I mean, w why the investors invest in it and how the profit is made? And the second is if your vision is to have all these new institutions under the same platform, uh, or uh, you encourage and you make it easy for people to make their own open collectives in their own servers. And because in the internet, it was not only one server that yeah. hosted all the other ones. Yeah, uh, great question. So the business model of Open Collective is the same as any other crowdfunding platform. So we take 5%. Um, and, and then there is like the host organization, which is the legal entity that is virtualizing itself. Uh, it's up to them to take how much commission they want, which is basically about mutualizing the cost of accounting and all of that, right? Um, so that's the business model. Um, the, uh, we, everything is open source, so anyone can fork the code and create their own instance. Like, the model is a bit more like Word, WordPress, right? You have WordPress.com and then WordPress.org, and if you want, you can have your own instance, or you can use because you want to focus on other things and say, like, okay, I'm just going to pay the commission and I can focus on my work. Um, and so we, we allow that. It's MIT licensed, though it cannot be more permissive than, than what it is. Is there another 
No, so at this point, I've, I've not seen any yet, but we have already like multiple host organizations in different countries. Um, so uh, like Women Who Code is one of them. Uh, we have another one, uh, we have process together here. We also have, uh, so in the US, um, I was just in Japan earlier this week, they're gonna have their own host there as well. Um, and so the, the, the goal is to build a network of host organizations all around the world, so that it doesn't matter where you come from, you should be able to just like, through a single interface, create a virtual instance for your own community. Yep. Um, I see this as a tool for transparency and uh, fundraising also. And when you talk about communities, we think only of the good communities. But, but what happens, for example, if a white supremacist uh, or racist group wants to use your open collective? Do you have any ethical codes or is it just open as a tool? Yeah, so, so definitely like we, we won't do it like directly yourself, um, right? Because um, we, I mean right now you, because basically we are virtualizing existing legal entities, the host is taking liabilities. Um, right, so it's a bit like smart in that regard, and so um, that's why like the host is you need to apply to create a collective, and the host can approve or not approve your collective, right? Uh, so that said, like nothing stops people to fork the code and use that code to on their own server, right, to use it. Uh, but I guess like y you know like we actually we. I mean, it's an important topic, and and it's been debated a lot right now in the United States. Um, and I had that issue with Storyfy as well, where um, there were a group of homophobes who were using Storyfy. And, and you know, I know at first like, we wanted to kind of shut it down, and then what we realized is that all of those groups um, were already operating in their own bubbles. And by using Storyfy in that case, like, it enabled people to, to see that, oh, we had no idea that some people were thinking that way. And thanks to that, it put kind of a light, on, a spotlight on it and people could react to it, right? And so like, when it comes to Open Collective, I think like kind of in the same way, like because of the transparency aspect of it, um, I would rather see being able to see exactly what's happening. I think like the best way to solve a problem is to put the spotlight on it, right? And so that's why we believe strongly in transparency um, because you cannot solve a problem that you cannot see. Yeah, so the question is about, uh, can you choose or not who is sponsoring you? Um, so, um, uh, so it's still a, f a fairly new platform, um, and so there's still a bunch of features that we haven't developed because, you know, we need to start with the most asked uh, uh, features. And so we, right now, t technically you can't, uh, but it's something that we've been asked, and so there is no reason not to offer that to the community, so we will at some point. I mean, you can, you just, you just need to contact the support and we will do it manually, but there's no features for, um, but, but yeah. Last question. Yeah, I, saw, I, I saw some balance uh, in, a, in some accounts uh, uh, in red, minus. You do credit uh, or, or? No, no, or so why? the minus was just to show like uh, money going out, you know, removing money from the collective. Uh -huh. um, and then, uh, but the collective cannot go negative, okay. right? So the analogy here is really like also servers back in the 90s. Like the, at the beginning when we started hosting multiple websites on one single server, it was only for very simple websites, like static files, right? You couldn't do database or very complicated things. And so it's only over time that we started improving the technology to do more virtual servers. And so here we kind of do the same analogy, which is right now, we, we want to, we realize that for 90% of the association that exists out there, they don't need anything fancy. They don't need to be able to do loans. They don't need to be able to, 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 to hire necessarily, like, you know, have complicated contracts. And so we want to cater to those needs first, uh, and then over time, you know, enabling more and more stuff. But, so right now, you cannot go negative. Uh, but for most people, it's, it's good enough. Thank you. Thank you very much.